How's it going guys? What you'll see today is an episode of Sniping Highlights or Recon Highlights. My most popular series continues where I basically uh, post together the sniping highlights in a montage of... Uh, well, the highlights that probably wouldn't be good enough to post on their own separate videos. But just piece together, make a pretty interesting video. Uh, if you're not familiar, that's what it is. Uh, and basically the commentary topic I had and I wanted to talk about today is twofold. The first being that... I wanted to do another question and answer video again, uh, and it'll be in either a, uh, another recon video in the future with no ETA because I'm finishing up exams and I'm kind of busy in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but that being said, I, I do have some questions I can answer, but I don't have enough. So if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments of this video, and of course I'll address them in a future video down the road. Uh, but again, no ETA, and it might come in the form of another sniping highlights video, or it might come... Uh, in the form of a couple of videos that I plan on making when I'm done exams and I'm clear that maybe if, if since I'll be playing more I'll post a montage every month or so maybe not perfectly edited like my previous one in that but uh, maybe something sort of along the line similar to the X Factor does where he posts like bi-weekly or monthly highlights post that something like that uh, and I'll answer them there but anyway yeah just if you have any questions post them in the comments and well, I'll invest them toward future videos the real topic I wanted to talk about today to fill the rest of the time is it's a really controversial one in fact and I've actually held off from doing this for a while because it's sure to piss people off. <laughs> if I've learned anything from doing this YouTube thing for the last few years, if you express any sort of opinion and don't stick to purely undisputable facts, 50% of your fan base is surely going to be pissed off at the end of the video so uh, well basically I expect 50% of you to be mad at the video. Despite this, like being, uh, be having a large background in sociology, I'm always curious as to how people react to certain scenarios, information, and how it applies to society as a whole. How we can better ourselves, how we're weak, how we can fix that. All sorts of those interesting dynamics at play. So I wanted to basically, despite knowing that I'm sure it irritates some of you, and most, and a lot, quite a few of you will probably unsubscribe, and that's fine, I get it. Uh, but I did what was curious enough to, or I was curious enough to basically ask the question of what your thoughts on Battlefield 4 are. Do you think it's an absolute abomination to consumer rights? It's a disgrace of a game that shouldn't have been released? Or do you feel it's the best game out there and anyone else who has that contrasting opinion is an idiot? Feel free to disclose it. Let me know what you think. Uh, and what I'll do to start it off is I'll give you my opinion. The very first thing I'll do. Uh, is give you my opinion on basically how the game runs now and then I'll give you issues I've had with it and issues I think still need to be addressed uh, and here we go first things first uh, with regard to how the game actually runs now uh, there's little performance issues in terms of well basically computer issues I have little to no frame rate drops I have little to no crashes or issues that arise, like I said, computer performance based. Uh, when the game first came out the first few months, I had frame rate drops that would almost be a third of what they were. I'd drop from 90 to 30 in three footsteps. Or I'd have crashes. I couldn't play the game the first month or two. I barely posted any videos because, well, I couldn't. Every join, every match I'd join, I'd crash and it wouldn't save my stats. So what's the point of playing? <laughs> and I'm sure, I know a lot of people on PC had this issue too until it was... Uh, I guess fixed for the most part. For me, I haven't had this issue at all recently. I can't remember the last time I crashed, which is great. The only big problem with this being is that it's nearly seven months from the launch, and it finally works now. I had I, I still had crashes as, as recently as two months ago. So again, so that's the biggest issue I've faced then, but it's it's better now. I haven't crashed at all. Uh, lag and hit detection issues continue to persist among pretty much all platforms. I have big lag issues and lag issues, and the biggest problem, of course, is part rubber banding and part the fact that I have the worst internet on earth, so that's a big factor in there as well. Uh, but again, as much as those issues have been fixed or are being addressed, uh, this was, like I said, the direct opposite for the first two to four months or so of the game cycle because it's clear Battlefield 4 was rushed through quality control to beat Call of Duty to the market in what was basically a clear Econ 101 move. They basically knew that they were going to sell the game regardless of whether or not it was basically a pile of shit or not, so they threw it out the door and said people are going to buy it and we'll still have good numbers. Uh, and you can find plenty of articles saying that they basically did rush it through quality control. If you think that my biased opinions are being a factor into it, I promise you they're not. I promise you it's fact. It's just the way it is. 
Uh, but just you could tell that this was a factor because the amount of bugs that were rampant then and some even c c continue now can't be attributed to anything else but a rushed schedule. The logic just doesn't lie. You can be as big as a fanboy or fan of DICE and EA as you want, but the logic just is completely destroys your opinion there. Uh, the tragic thing to me about this game, though, is that EA and DICE, because uh, uh, as, as much because they are both at fault despite being uh, DICE being owned by EA, had they taken their time to actually make sure that the game works, that some of the balance issues were addressed at launch, uh, and basically put out the game, say, sometime this year instead, say now, uh, I bet it could have been one of those games to set the bar, so to speak. It would have blown all the rest of the FPS market away. That's what I feel. Because I feel this game now still, as it plays now, because there are still some issues, but it still plays pretty well, it's, it's by far probably the most fun game I own other than Battlefield 3 for now. And But like the a lot of the implementations they put into Battlefield 4 it were improvements on Battlefield 3. So I think this game could have ran away with the FPS market with ease. Uh, but in, but uh, of course, as we've seen, it didn't work out that way. I genuinely believe it, they probably wouldn't even need the Christmas market if this game was ready to roll this year. Uh, other games would have looked to BF4 as a starting point for many new features, but instead not only did they alienate previous fans, they probably scared off potential clients. Uh, and the reason being is what I said before. They made great money this round, figuring regardless people will buy the game. But I don't think they can realistically expect it to happen again after this horrific launch, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I see threads every day in the battle log and Reddit forums, uh, basically asking if the game's been fixed yet and if it's actually worth investing the amount of money well, that people have into it. Uh, and I basically always answer it the same way of if you're willing to put up with a game that has its issues, then yes, because when it works, it's great fun, but when it's not, no, it's garbage. Uh, but that's how I usually answer it. I never usually pre-order a game, but I did for Battlefield 4, and I learned my lesson. I will never buy, or I'll never pre-order again. Uh, and the next release, I might even wait or so a month or so, or at least play the beta footage and see how that plays out. If you're still with me and you're not horribly pissed off, uh, the biggest issues that I faced previously, like I said, were crashes and hit detection issues and rubber banding. Some of those are still rampant. Uh, but this wasn't including balance issues, uh, such as just how the maps were designed. Some of them were very poor. Silk Road Rush for attackers is basically an instant loss for and a lot of the time. Uh, if you look at Zevode 311 Rush, the last set of MCOMs is basically, again, attackers instantly lose unless the attacking team is horrifically stacked. Uh, and m much of the issues I had, like I said, are sometimes my ISP. But when everything else is running fine, uh, when every everything else being equal, when there's lag issues in the servers I play, it's clear that Battlefield 4 servers are at fault, and, they, and even they, uh, Dice EA admitted to that and are clearly improving their servers as they say now. Uh, the, the most overall disappointing part to me, I think, is just the fact that the lack of servers to play for Rush and Obliteration. On a good day, at, say, peak hours of 7-8 p.m., I usually only find maybe two or three servers to play, which is really disappointing. Uh, I could suffer through the problems Battlefield 4 had with no qualms at all if I could just play my favorite mode of Rush undeterred. Uh, but it's... It's hard to find servers, and in addition to that, when I actually find a server, it's one side's horrifically unbalanced. And in addition to that, it just doesn't have anywhere near the consistency and fun factor that it did in Battlefield 3. Uh, in addition, both of those uh, modes of rush and obliteration just don't seem designed for the maps, to be honest. Uh, to me, rush has taken a big step backwards in terms of layout and map design, presents big balance issues. Another issue, in addition, that affects Rush is that there's just too many explosives, too many choke points, too little cover in some of the maps. Uh, Commander road mode, I feel, ruins Rush because you can designate a target that's flanking, so even if you designate only one guy, if he's with a squad of five, that entire area is lit up. Uh, and then you can constantly throw UAVs. So, And, and the counterpoint will be, yeah, well, the, count the other commander can throw a uh, counter UAV, but a lot of the time it doesn't work that way. A lot of the time, w one team will have a commander and one won't, so it's a gigantic disadvantage. Uh, and basically that's a big problem for Rush in my eyes. Uh, and the other issues for me is that air, su air support just isn't as much fun either. I was never great at jets in Battlefield 3, but jets and helicopters definitely don't seem as fun. 
uh, just because of the sheer amount of explosive and lock-on weapon weapons capable of taking you out. Uh, th the game's just too s bloated with explosives to me. It's Plus, in addition to that, it's just the little things that bug me. Uh, when you take a building down, it's great fun. You can kill the people in it. The problem being is that if you use that down building as cover now, Zevo 311 Rush is the perfect example for it, the second set of MCOMs. If you're hiding behind that down building, most of the time your bullets will hit an invisible wall that was previously where the building was standing before. And by the time you actually decide to think that, oh god, there's an invisible wall blocking my bullets, you'll have to reload and the enemy comes around the wall and kills you. And it's those little things like that, and uh, the revive bug that Jack Frags just posted about a couple weeks ago, something like that, where if you're hiding behind a guy that's revived, uh, your bullets and explosive basically do nothing. It's little things like that that kill the experience for me. Uh, and again, okay, uh, there are some... Uh, Obliteration, I feel, is a nice, innovative game type, but I think it has some issues as well. Uh, as one of my subscribers also eloquently put it, it's like watching a Little League game uh, for soccer where the children just end up chasing the bomb the entire time with no defense, not a lot of strategy, and it's basically some team deathmatch in the middle. Uh, but to be honest, I still find obliteration fun at times when there is that balance, uh, but I just think it needs to have some changes, some implementations. I haven't really thought of any, but I do feel the, the change needs to be addressed without actually directing my interpretation to it unless I thought it through. Uh, but that being said, if you're still with me after all of the trashing I had done of this game, I will close it this way by saying that it's still the most fun game I currently have, maybe with Battlefield 3 fighting for that spot. It's, that's what keeps me coming back, despite all these issues. So my question to you is basically simple. What are your thoughts on Battlefield 4? Uh, have you, I know uh, PlayStation 4 has the, and Xbox One have all the rubber banding issues. I know uh, Dawnbreaker doesn't even work for consoles. Uh, but my question to you is, what is your opinion on it? Like I said, do you think it's an abomination to consumer rights? Do you feel it was a disgrace and a waste of money? Or do you feel it was overall, like, a game that you that you had fun? To me, my ultimate decision was that I think it was, for the amount of time I played, I think it was worth the 60 bucks to buy, uh, but I'm not sure I would have bought premium. Uh, that's my basic thoughts with it. I would buy the game again, uh, at least based on, especially on how it plays now, maybe not when it came out. So I don't feel my $60 has been wasted, but I do feel my 40 for premium has. So if I could do that over, I wouldn't buy premium again. But that's it. Let me know your, uh, your thoughts from anywhere from praise to hatred. And don't forget to ask any questions for me in the question and answer video in the future. And Because I, I can't make that question or I can't make that video without the questions. Have a good day. See you later.